tonight these people play mostly for your applause and your adoration and tonight we're going to start this half of the show off with some real dynamite by by the mid break you're going to say wow I've seen more banjo than I ever thought I would anyway and to start it off we're going to start off with Peter Mazoyan from Portland Maine Peter Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome my, my tuba player for this evening, a man whom you will be seeing a lot of. His name is John Stewart. Let's, uh, let's get things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This thing going right. You know, I'm going to try a little song that's been really, really good to me. It's uh, a little tune, John. E flat. Ah, good. There's nothing better than starting a show off in tune. I've always said. Thank you. 
you're going to like this. This is, I'm sure a lot of you love Broadway shows, as I do. This is from one of my very favorite Broadway shows called Oklahoma.
one year. By the way, Peter is Peter. Uh, uh, Peter will be featured out in uh, Oregon, Seattle, or uh, Seattle. Yeah, Oregon. Seattle must Washington. Washington. That's right. I got the. <laughs> If I told you that was part of my joke, would you believe it? <laughs> I knew I'd get you laughing somehow. No, but he is featured, he's going to be featured in several, but for your information, he's going back to school. You know, he took one year last year after he graduated from high school to decide if he wanted to play the banjo, and he made a, a, really a tremendous impact on the banjo world. He's known all over the country. He just got back from uh, uh, Michigan. I was out there, uh, not with him, but at the same time at the convention, and he knocked him dead out there with his stuff and uh, uh, he's going back to school, going to college, Colby, and he's going to keep his banjo playing up at the same time and I think he's taking a correspondence course, course from Berkeley, <laughs> which shows you what you can do if you put your mind to it, Peter Zavilli. Uh This next chap, uh, you know him, uh, he's a local boy and he's been on all of our shows here uh, in this thing and every year he, uh, uh, he amazes me because he comes up with something a little bit new and a little bit different, a little bit original. Uh, let's welcome uh, Canadian U.S. or U.S. Open champion. He's not no longer the uh, current champion, an ex-champion. Also an ex-Canadian uh, 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 tenor champion. In fact, we have two of them on the uh, program tonight. Uh, but without any further ado, let me introduce uh, Mike Hasham from Barrington. If we don't have a few shills in the audience tonight, we never will. We're going to start off with a few traditional Dixieland numbers. One, we'll start off with uh, <clears throat> Back Home Again in Indiana, followed with uh, Strutting with Some Barbecue, and Found a New Baby. Not necessarily in that order. Thank you. 
down now, seeing as how Willie Nelson is going to be playing down in Epping or Lee, one or the other, we're going to play a couple Willie Nelson songs. Uh, one, Crazy, and all of them. I'll play you all of them. <laughs>
songs right now. <clears throat> One for a guy standing up back up there <clears throat> by the name of Ed Dubrio, because I can see him. Hi, Eddie. He taught me a song a long time ago, <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, a song that means a lot to me. I play it for my kids, and it's called My Little Girl. But then followed by that, we'd like to slow it down, and everybody knows the great one, Jackie Gleason just passed away. And he was one of my favorites for years and years, and when he came on with, the, uh, with his show, he always sang the song that we'll do. You'll recognize it.
John Stewart. <clears throat> I met an Englishman in Flint and he told me a joke which I gotta tell you. While he was there, he come up to me and he says, My wife just called me. And me uncle died. I says, oh gee, that's too bad. He says, there's more to it than that. I says, what? He says, my wife told me that he left me 5,000 watches. And I says, well, that's not too bad. What am I gonna do with 5,000 watches, I told my wife. She says, you don't have to worry about that. It's gonna take about six months to wind up the estate. <laughs> like that, huh? Uh, I knew you would be a grown up. But wait. I could never let you go with the first go because the second one always gets a laugh. <laughs> In all of those watches, there was a grandfather's clock. And he says, when I got my wa estate all wound up, I had this grandfather's clock at home, and a little boy mouse and a little girl mouse decided to live in it. And they fell in love, <laughs> and they got married in the spring. I <laughs> 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 feel like that one too. This, this next gentleman uh, I met, uh, no, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven years ago, and he was just a young player coming on the scene. Banjo, he comes from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. By the way, we're not following the program, so throw it away. <laughs> We've changed it all around. We've changed it all around, and we have a surprise for you. We have somebody else that I managed to convince to come and play for you from Austin, Texas, and that'll be in the second half of the show. But the next chap I want to introduce for you comes from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, as I say, I met him as a young banjo player, and uh, I was intimidated by him then, and I'm even more intimidated as I see his style and uh, his creative ability keep growing, uh, yet he, he seems to be a regular guy when you talk to him. Uh, he has won the Canadian Open. He has played around in all of the Feigert Convention. He was one of the featured banjo players out at the Sacramento uh, Dixieland Festival in uh, on Memorial Day, which was fantastic. And those of you who like Dixieland music, put that on your calendars of things to do. Uh, without any further ado, and without a lot of introduction, you, you said enough. Uh, I, that's true, <laughs> Johnny Baya. <laughs> Thank Jerry for that fine introduction. He read that just like I wrote it. <laughs> you know, being out here on the East Coast for a farm boy from Oshkosh is kind of a change. When my parents used to talk about the East Coast, I thought they meant Green Bay. <laughs> you can imagine my surprise when I took that ferry and found Michigan on the other side of that lake, you know? Guys, got what you need? Okay, we're going to start off with a little bit of a tune from the 1920s called the 12th Street Rag. <laughs>
audience, our agent promised us a warm place to work, and this is it, yeah. <laughs> they, they told us they weren't going to air condition it, that way we'd keep our act short, so I'll keep the jokes to a minimum. Can I hang this here to dry? Is that all right? Very nice, thank you. Don't make fun of my hometown, I'm from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's a very uh, nice little town in the middle of the state, and we have the largest aviation event of the world coming up next week. It's the EAA convention with over 10,000 airplanes and a million people coming to our town. So that's a nice thing. If you're in Oshkosh, stop by. <laughs> Fly in, yeah? Okay. But there are a lot of farms out there, one of which on which I grew up, and this was a little medley of two tunes. They used to drive the uh, poultry and things kind of wild. This is Turkey in the Straw and Goofus. <laughs> share with you, and uh, Jerry doesn't even know this, uh, this past week I signed a uh, contract with Columbia Records. Uh, isn't that nice? Uh, no, wait, wait. I gotta I got tell you about it first. Every six weeks they send me some records, and if I like them, I keep them. This next song we're going to do for you is one of those... <laughs> Did y'all get that out there? Yeah, all right. This next song we're going to do for you is an awe song. That means when we play it, you're all going to go, ah, uh, okay? It's one of my favorites. Hope you enjoy. From Glenn Miller, Moonlight Serenade. You haven't heard it yet. Thank you. 
Thank you. Before we go any further, this is Jay Broderson on the bass. Nice hand for Jay. Well, thank you. I can't tell you what a lovely audience you are. I'm going to do one more song for you. And before I do, I'm just thinking of one way you could look just a little bit better. Is if you would, uh, when you're leaving uh, tonight, if you'd have a couple of my tapes that are for sale out in the lobby in your pocket or your purse. Yeah. I don't mean to plug those things like that, but God, we got to get them in somewhere. Get some gas money to get back to Oshkosh. <laughs> so uh, they are for sale along with uh, Peter's and uh, the Ragtimers. They're all up for sale and they'll be for sale in the lobby and we will autograph them for you to decrease their value. But this is one off my, uh, this is one off my yellow tape. This is called the Tiger Rag. Hope you enjoy. Okay, good. One, two, one, two. intermission. There are refreshments downstairs, okay? By the clock it's 20 past. We're ahead of schedule. Should be a great night. Take about uh, 15 minutes, okay, for an intermission and uh, we'll be back. Thank you. Sure. How were the refreshments? Good? I never got down there. Were they good? Super. Uh, you hear the joke about the lady who was uh, speeding along the highway, going pretty fast, her husband sitting aside of her. Pretty soon she had this state trooper in back of her with the blue light going on, so she started picking up speed. And she was <laughs> going 40, 50, and the state trooper staying right with her. Pretty soon another state trooper picks up and he's driving along with her. She's going 60, 
70 and another state trooper now there's four state troopers in back all chasing this woman and her husband's sitting in science saying what are you doing pretty soon she pulls into the rest area parks the car jumps out runs into the ladies room leaves her husband sitting there <laughs> the state troopers all come up around him you know and he says I don't know I was just riding with her I don't know what got into her <laughs> So the two state troopers line up on the walk coming out of the ladies room and she comes walking out and she says, I bet you didn't think I was gonna make it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> we have a surprise for you. John Hunsberger from uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, we were both out at the FIGA convention and John was visiting his daughter in Boston and we got to talking about Australia and going to Australia and our common things and when I finally was in Boston I says hey how would you like to come up and play on the show? He said I'd love to come up and play. I'd love to come up here and play. I uh, dug out a little information on John aside of being a teacher and a, uh, with a doctor's degree and a few other things. He loves a banjo and whenever he travels he contacts all banjo players. He told me how he started to learn the banjo or I heard about it. I had to dig some information up. He learned it from a chap who ran a bakery and John begged him to, play, to teach him how to play the banjo and the baker says okay I'll teach you but the only time we can practice is when the donuts cool okay and the bread cools and he used to cook the bread and the donuts and everything at night and he'd leave them cool and from four o'clock on so that John had to go there and take his lessons at four o'clock in the morning which he did do without any further ado give him a warm welcome he came in here no calling, he said, I love the company. He's out here making friends with all the banjo players in the back, a super guy. Please welcome John Hutzberger from Austin, Texas. too much of the Green River Whiskey. Half past four, Dan McGraw came sneaking through his wifey's door. She'd been waiting up all night, waiting for him to go to bed. Danny smiled like a child, but his wifey grew very wild. Where have you been all night long? She cried, and this is what Danny replied. I've been floating down that whole green river on the good ship rock and ride. But I floated too far, I got stuck on the bar. I was out there alone, wishing that I were home. The ship got wrecked with the captain and crew. So there was no thing else there to do. So I had to drink that whole green river dry to get back home to you. Thank you. 
very much. I'd like to do a tune for you now called Lover. just waiting to play someplace, huh? <sighs> this is another English joke and a cutie and I gotta tell it to you because from here on and there will be no more jokes because we got a good show. <laughs> <laughs> After this joke you'll, you'll, you'll change your mind. This is about the young English couple that get married and after about a year and a half, two years, everything was going fine but he got a little restless and uh, uh, and he says, you know, I think we ought to agree to have one secret from each other. And she says, oh, that sounds all right for me. She says, what do you got in mind? He says, let's make a deal. I'll agree never to look in your purse if you agree never to look into my top right-hand bureau drawer. <laughs> she says, okay, it's all right by me. They lived happily ever after for 40 years or so, and it was getting close to the time when they knew they might be moving along. And uh, he turned to her one day, night, they were sitting by the TV, and he says, you know, Molly, he says, I never looked in your purse all the years we've been married. And we were reflecting back over him. He says, did you ever look at my top drawer? She says, well, at one time when I was dusting, the dust cloth caught on the corner of the door and it just popped open. It was an accident. I didn't really. He says, and you looked in. Well, I, I, it was open and I couldn't help it, so I looked in the top door. He says, well, that's all right. Uh, he says, I forgive you. She said, well, just, <laughs> uh, he says, well, aren't you going to say anything about what's in there? And he said, well, what did you see? She says, well, I saw four golf balls and $5,000. He says, oh, I thought so. Well, that's too bad. He did not say any more. And she says, aren't you going to tell me what, what, why I should be upset about that? And he says, well, if you want to know, he says, every time I had an affair, I put a golf ball in the top drawer. <laughs> she says, well, you've been a wonderful husband. I guess I can forgive you four times, you know, and that's the way life is and et cetera. She says, what was the $5,000? He says, every time I got 15 golf balls, I sold them for, for $20. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that 
this next, uh, there won't be any more jokes. Uh, this next, uh, this next performer has been a performer every time at the, at the hospice, and he usually performs with his dad. You remember him as the, uh, the old smoothies I used to introduce him, and his dad doesn't play the banjo anymore. He's turned into an artist. He's retired, and he's painting, and he loves it, and I can't get him back on the stage playing the banjo. He says, hey, I'm doing what I want. But his boy is still playing great and doing a great job. And without any further ado, give a warm welcome to Don Willette from Lowell Mass. Don. It's a George Gershwin tune. This is called I've Got Rhythm. Said to be my brush and bride if she leads me to 
to the altar, dear, I'm stunk. This next song has been very, very special to me, and for years, uh, Jerry's always claimed that I stole this song from him. So once a year, I get to play it for him and kind of give it back to Jerry. This is uh, Jerry's theme song, and it's called Home. Evening marks the close of day. When skies of blue, they begin to gray. Crimson hues, they just fade right in the west. Evening ever means to me Dreams of days that used to be Memories of those I love the best When them, them shadows fall And trees whisper to his ending My heart is ever wending Wending home When them, them crickets call Forever yearning Once more to be returning home And when the hills conceal The setting sun Stars begin to break out may forsake me sweet dreams they'll ever take take me home I guess this is a funny looking banjo. <laughs> this is a song that Neil Diamond wrote, and when they had the unveiling of the Statue of Liberty, this is one of the songs that he played. This is one of my favorite tunes. This is called America. <laughs>
They're coming to America Got a dream to take them there They're coming to America Got a dream that they can share They're coming to America 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 today Tears of thee, sweet, sweet land of liberty. Of thee I sing, of thee I sing today. Everywhere around the world, clap your hands, they're coming to America. Every time that flag's unfurled, they're coming to America. Every to take them there, they're coming to America. Got a dream that they can share, they're coming to America. They're coming to America. They're coming to America. They're coming to America They're coming to America Today Never miss the old man. We'll have to tell him that. <laughs> uh, this next gal uh, is back here by, uh, by, I guess by popular demand. She made a real hit on you when she was here two years ago. She made a hit on me when I was out in uh, Figa. Great gal. She is, she is something. I'll tell you the kind of hit she made on me out there. She got me dressed up in a wig with a uh, <coughs> set of a chest that I, I never thought I'd have. She got John Huntsberger in the same kind of an outfit. And uh, the, those of you who were at the first uh, uh, hospice meeting or hospice uh, show, uh, we had Sandy Reiner here. Well, they got Sandy Reiner, who was a big guy, and got him in a, in a wig. And uh, we, the three of us played the Android Sisters. <laughs> but to tell you the kind of talent that this gal has got, she, last year, at the FIGA, she says, you know, all the gals in FIGA, which is Fretted Instrument Guild of America, ought to get together and form their own band. So she wrote a letter out and says, we want to put together an all-girl band, banjo band. Believe it or not, she had, I think she had 30 women on the stage. And in three days and in three rehearsals, she taught those girls six songs and they were the hit of the show. Of course it could have been because, you know, I was dressed up as a woman. <laughs> she had some background stuff going on, but there was an awful lot of applause at the end. I'm sure it wasn't for us guys, it was for Helen and the Great War. So without any further, you know, Helen's a senior citizen. She won't tell me how old she is. Uh, that's a secret. I've been trying to pry it out, but she won't. All I know is she's young at heart, a wonderful person. Welcome Helen Baker from Akron, Ohio. Helen. Hi, everyone. How you doing? How you like the show so far? Yeah, tremendous. I wish you would have seen Jerry, though he had eyelashes about this long, as one of the Android sisters. And the show, well, it was a, we got a standing ovation on it. And I'm sure it was Jerry that did it. <laughs> 
he was Squirrely. His name was Squirrely. Now, I'm going to play something for you back in my own era. I want to show that, you know, you can still got it. If you got it, you got it. <laughs> and so, this is for all you senior citizens out in the audience. And uh, you, you used to play around in this section of the country. The Ida Ray Hutton Orchestra played here, and I was a guitarist in the outfit. And uh, we were, so you know, travel with some of these fellows. And uh, one of them was Duke Ellington. Do you remember dancing to Duke Ellington? Well, thank you. Aha. A few remember, more than a few. And uh, he used to do this number that he composed with Juan Tizal, the trombonist in his band. And was, uh, the name of the number was Caravan. So here we are, the caravan comes in, you know goes across the stage and goes out on the other side. And so here we are, caravan. I'll get set up here. See, we never know. No, this mic has to go. Maybe I have to sit That's it, because I'm up here. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. music. So I'm going to play and sing a classic for you, and that's called Chickens. <laughs> See? Now it's all about animal husbandry, or all about husband animalry. I don't know which. Take your pick. Say, by the way, I wanted to introduce somebody that's been on stage most of the night. <laughs> He's from Hampton, New Hampshire. So that's why I want you to introduce him. This is John Stewart doing a terrific job here. Thank you. 
That's my grandson. <laughs> we had some chickens. No eggs would they lay. We had some chickens. No eggs would they lay. My wife said, We're losing money. This isn't funny. Why don't they lay? One day a rooster came into our yard. He caught those chickens right off their guard. They're laying eggs now, just like they used to, ever since that rooster came into our yard. They're laying eggs now, just like they used to, ever since that rooster came into our yard. Yes, they're laying eggs now, a dozen a day. Every darn chicken lays a dozen a day. My wife said, Honey, we're making money. This is really funny. My, how they lay. Poor rooster's dead now. They laid him away. But his son is making those pullets lay. They're laying eggs now, just like they used to, ever since a rooster came into our yard. They're laying eggs now, just like they used to, ever since a rooster came into our yard. Now we had some hound dogs. And they wouldn't hunt. We had some hound dogs, and they refused to hunt. My wife said, Honey, we're losing money. This isn't funny. Why don't they hunt? One day a rooster came into our yard. He caught those hound dogs right off their guard. They're laying poached eggs just like they used to ever since the rooster came into our yard. They're laying poached eggs just like they used to ever since the rooster came into our yard. Now we had some cows. No milk would they give. We had some cowsy wowsies. No milk would they give. My wife said, Honey, we're losing money. This isn't funny. Why don't they milk? One day a rooster came into our yard he caught those bossies right off their guard they're laying eggnogs just like they used to ever since the rooster came into our yard they're laying eggnogs in wax containers ever since the rooster came into our still go back so many years and remember that beautiful showboat everything was there's so many beautiful tunes from that I only picked out three and we're going to do John and I are going to do here comes the showboat only make-believe and 
Old Man River. I'd like to have you sing along with me, especially on Old Man River, because I can play it better when you sing. You know, it gives me that punch that we have to have a little emphasis on it. Back from Dover, I'm the one 
two-legged wonder. I'm looking over the poor lady over that I've overlooked before. First into sunshine, second for me. Third is a rose. Thank you. 
Summerland. And thanks, John. He's going to do a chorus on the Stars and Strips Forever, and he's going to play this last chorus for us. Okay? surprise for you, because I'm going to put on the stage uh, two Canadian national banjo champions together. I talked to Mike and Johnny, uh, who competed up there against each other at that time, and I said, hey, would you come out and do one number with the two of you together, and they agreed to do it. Without any further ado, Johnny Byer and Mike Hasham to do a number just for you. This is the original.
old banjo show is complete unless you have an old fashioned banjo band. So to finish off the show, the banjo egg time is.
Illinois and the kid. John Neubauer. Oh, Huntsberger. Huntsberger. <laughs> and John Stewart. And all my, all my loving guys. The right time. Thank you very much. Been a super night.